Hey cuties, how are we all doing? <laughs> So hello, welcome back. It is time for another episode of Wrapped Up. The number of books that we have still wrapped up is rapidly dwindling. <laughs> so if you don't know, this is a series I do where I wrapped up last Christmas, all of the 2021 releases that I still have. And in this vlog, I unwrap one or two <laughs> and I read it and do a reading vlog for it. So I'm just gonna let you know now, A, I've got builders in. So if you hear banging, that's why. <laughs> They're here all week. <laughs> Try the veal. Number two, Wrapped Up is gonna go on for two more months. So we're gonna have this one in August, one in September, and then it will go off the boil. It will disappear for October and November whilst I figure out what I wanna do for it in December. Cause I still want it to happen in December. These weekly, it's weekly in December, but I want it to be fresh. I want it to be exciting. And I'm not sure what I'm gonna be doing yet for it. So I unwrap one. And then if I'm not like 100% filling it, I can unwrap another one. And then I have to pick between those two. So. It's always like the most pressured situation trying to figure out what to unwrap. I'm feeling like this is what I've landed on and it just feels right. I feel like a hardback at the moment, but let's see what this is. <gasps> oh my God. <laughs> yeah! No, this isn't a lie. This is one of the books I wanted most, guys. I saw the corner of it and I knew immediately, oh my God. <laughs> It's my birthday. It's my birthday. It's my birthday. Happy birthday to me. This is The Man Who Died Twice by Richard Osman. A five star prediction. Uh, Thursday Murder Club was my favorite book of last year. Second favorite. Both the first and second were tied, I would say, last year. I loved it. It's a murder mystery. It's a mainstream murder mystery. And I loved it so much. We're following this um, old elderly group of friends who solve murder mysteries together every Thursday. And then a murder happens on their front yard, essentially, in the retirement home where they live. And they decide to go and solve it. Oh my God. This is like one of the books I've been most excited to read. I'm so happy. Now the the one little thing I just thought that is a little bit of a drawback is a little bit of like a, is that this is obviously a sequel and this is just a one book vlog so it needs to fill the whole vlog. So obviously with mysteries it's a bit easier because like it's individual mysteries. The first book is a very individual enclosed mystery and I get the sense that this is going to be another mystery. The only thing I'm going to say is that isn't a spoiler that I'm gonna go on as if we all know the gang's all here. Do you know what I mean? Like the I don't think you're ever really in danger of the friends splitting up. The gang's all here and we're gonna be investigating another mystery. I don't really know what the plot of this one is. We will find out as we go. I will give you a synopsis of the mystery. Like I'll give you probably the initial synopsis because like I said, mystery series are a bit different to say a fantasy series where it's like an ongoing character arc. Yes, these characters are developing in some way, but it's not key to the story. It's gonna be a new individual mystery. It's like when I would, for example, read different Hercule Poirot books, I can give you the synopsis of the book because they're all kind of separate. It's that kind of vibe. Oh my God, I can't believe how happy I am. So I'm gonna be reading this this week. I feel like I'll probably read it in like a day. So this vlog will probably be quite quick. But yes, I'm very happy. What a result. That's like probably one of the best things I could have unwrapped. I'm live with my patrons right now and I'm about to start it. <laughs> I'm not gonna lie, I am a bit scared that I'm gonna finish it in like one sitting. Like I'm just gonna finish it tonight and just not vlog. <laughs> but I'm very excited. I'm really, really excited. They've all predicted I'm gonna love it. I'm feeling good vibes. So I wanna get at least 100 pages into it tonight. Oh God, it's, I feel so anxious. I feel like more anxious reading this than anything I've I felt anxious in a while because yeah, I just really wanna love it. <laughs> really wanna love it. And cause it's so hyped and so many people said they've preferred the second one. I'm just very nervous, so let's go. So I am a hundred pages in to The Man Who Died Twice and I'm loving it. I'm loving it! 
There's no choice but to stand. I was so nervous to pick this up. I felt so much pressure going into it because I love the first one so much. But I'm loving it. It feels like coming home. You know, I was so nervous to start off with. Like when I started reading it, I'd kind of forgotten who all the different characters were and what their dynamics were. But within the first chapter, Richard Osman does such a good job of like slowly, you know, easing you into remembering who everyone is and all the different kind of uh, dynamics between everyone and the role they play in the story and I just love the writing I think it's so like comforting it just feels like a hug you guys <laughs> I love it I love it it's gonna be five stars <laughs> So in this one, Elizabeth, who's one of the four main characters, uh, receives a letter from a man that she believed to be dead saying, I'm here at the retirement village and I need your help. And it's spiraling into this like big situation. <laughs> I can't, I can't, I can't, I can't keep this a secret. Where kind of Elizabeth's past is kind of catching up with her and it's affecting all of them. I just love all the characters. I've almost cried already once. <laughs> I love the the dry like British sense of humor in it. I'm just loving it. I really really am. I'm just so excited to see what route is going to go down and how the mystery is going to develop because we're kind of like on the precipice I feel like of a mystery actually happening. Anyways I'm going to go out now and hopefully I'll read some more today but I am just loving it. evening <laughs> i'm really hot somebody lied to her several times and it's not even hot in here anymore i feel like my body temperature today has been off anyways i feel like when i check in with you my first check in for this book let me just remove the uh the wire obscuring my view of myself <laughs> I feel like when I spoke to you, I was in a rush. I feel like I did a shit job, like a shit first check-in, like really let you down. Like really, I was thinking about it all day. I was really pissed at myself, <laughs> but I was in a rush to leave. And I, I finished filming and I was like, well, <laughs> gotta go. I am now halfway through The Man Who Died Twice. I'm gonna put her down here because she's not in her dust jacket anyway. And um, uh, I'm hot, so I don't wanna hold her. <laughs> This is such an interesting reading experience. I'm loving it. It's still a five star, but I've been struggling at moments to get into it on purpose. <laughs> now, when did I last check in with you? Yesterday. Yesterday morning, I think. And I had times yesterday when I could read it. I went around Tom's house and um, I had times yesterday when I could read it, but I didn't because I was like, this isn't the perfect moment. <laughs> I was like, I need to wait to read it in the perfect moment. Like everything has to be perfect. The conditions have to be perfect. But that's quite dramatic. Like I was outside in Tom's garden where I've read many times. If you were an OG of the channel here back in the day in like the pandemic 2020 when I lived there for a couple months, that garden was one of my favorite places to read. It's still one of my favorite places to read. But because I could hear people talking like in a garden over and I personally find it difficult to focus when I'm near speech like I find it difficult to read speech and hear it because my brain wants to just like pay attention to what I'm hearing that's why I can't listen to music that has speech in it when I'm reading like it was far away enough that I could have zoned it out but I was like not perfect close the book <laughs> I was like how dare you ah, no it's one of those books that I feel uh tricky to talk about because I love it so much you know like when I really love a book I like don't want to talk about it. I just want to like enjoy it and be protective and just like secretive, you know? Coming back to these characters, it's just a treat. It really is just a treat. Like when I was saying I was struggling to get, to get into it, every time I then restarted it trying to find the perfect moment, I did I struggle with the writing isn't the right word. It just took me a moment to get into it because I think this made me realize why some people don't love it is the writing is very like matter of fact there's almost no description and i think i spoke about this how there's almost no description last time i read it how it's literally just what people say literally just what people say and you kind of fill in the blanks so i can understand why people don't love it um if that's not the kind of thing you enjoy but i i really do love it i it just feels like a treat and i'm so excited for the third one to come out god books say eh? i fucking love reading <laughs> I love reading from a more elderly perspective, you know, in this book. They're all 
elderly people living in this retirement village, but like there'll be, when you're following their perspectives or whatever, there'll be little nuggets of wisdom that are so simple and yet so striking that only come from characters that have like lived a life. You know what I mean? That they've been through it. And as much as I love YA, <laughs> I think there's something so special about reading from characters of this age that like, I feel like we all need to do more and have more characters that are elderly. I think it's really, really important. You know, this, this book is such a great mystery. Where the mystery's going, I do have a prediction and I will be disappointed if that's like the big end reveal, but like if the thing that I'm thinking of, cause I think it's fairly obvious, if the thing that I'm thinking of does turn out to be true, but it's like the first reveal in a series of reveals, I won't be annoyed. And if it's not a reveal, if it's not true, then it's fine also. Also, I will say, I think I'm a little bit of a, of a fan, a stan if you will, for the subgenre of characters who have lived bonkers lives in the past, but like now are kind of living a more sedate, <laughs> calm life. If you can call what they're going through calm. I mean, literally they're like with MI5 agents, like drug dealing, like around dead bodies all day. Like it's not that calm. I love it. I love it and it gives me that buzz. But I have this with uh, le the Lady Hardcastle mysteries as well, which, you know, is another character who's not elderly. I think Lady Hardcastle is supposed to be like maybe 40s, but especially like a little bit longer ago, it's set like in the early 1900s, I suppose that is a bit older in terms of society standards. But um, her and her maid Flo in that book were like secret agents back in the day and they lived this crazy life and then they go to this country house to retire and yet it's the murder capital of the world. So you're constantly getting sprinkled little bits of information about their past escapades. And the same thing is happening in this, especially with Elizabeth. I'm tentative to say what Elizabeth's part is, past is because I don't think it's revealed in the first one. I think it was revealed to us in the second one, but it was like said in such a matter of fact way that I, I I wasn't sure if it was teased in the first one. So anyway, I'm not gonna say, but she lived a bonkers life. She was a very exciting woman. She got to a lot of exciting things. So um, I really love that. I really love when you're, you're meeting this character who's like almost got this secret double life that is only mentioned in fits and spurts. So I'm loving it. It just feels like a treat to read, but I do feel like, whoa, this is, I don't, oh, it's a lot of pressure. I don't know if I'm, loving it more than the first one at the moment, but it's an unfair comparison until we finish it because, you know, I'm sure there's gonna be some very emotionally impactful stuff towards the latter half of this book like there was in the first one. So I'm gonna go have a quick bath and then, excuse me, doggies. And then I will hopefully get to page 300 tonight and then I'll only have 100 pages of through tomorrow when this video is supposed to be going up. So, better go, better get, ooh, I sounded like a bad actor. <laughs> Jesse Nelson, rest in peace. No, um. <laughs> I sounded like that then. I went to say, better get my skates on, but the moment has gone. So, see you tomorrow morning. <laughs> hey. <laughs> Sorry, good morning. How rude of me. How rude of me. I am 300 pages into Man Who Dies Twice. It just feels like a treat reading it. I'm reading it really, really fast. I mean, the font in these is pretty pretty big. I don't know if you can see that. I just opened to a random page. I hope there wasn't any spoilers on there. <laughs> what? I've just made a massive mistake and now I'm really annoyed. Like yeah, the font is pretty big. So it's quite a quick read. I've got a hundred pages left to the end. There's some things I gotta say I'm really hoping don't happen. <laughs> When like people have told me that this made them cry a lot, there's certain things now that I could see happening that I'm like, shit, 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 shit. <laughs> I really, I really just don't want to happen. Um, I'm just still really enjoying it. I love the way this book, this series looks at human nature and aging and the fragility of time and life. And I think it's a very like inspiring, motivating book to read that reminds you like we don't have forever, you know? <laughs> and to be grateful for what we do have and to like really be motivated to live the life that you want to live and not wait for tomorrow or next week or next year, you know, which is, I think, something I've fell into a bit this year so far, which I've spoken a bit about. My family kind of just feel like we've been cursed this year and I've been struggling to find myself back in the best headspace. And I woke up this morning and I really felt amazing and felt like, you know, everything was going how I wanted it to and I felt very motivated and I felt very happy with what I was doing for probably the first time in a couple months, you know, and really felt like a bit of a fog had cleared. I don't know, reading something like this that I love reading so much that I'm having a great time reading but also makes me reflect on life 
it's just like a win-win situation and I feel like from reading this I have felt motivated to go to connect to other things that I know help me mentally with that kind of idea of now is now you know there's a phrase I love we're getting a bit philosophical we're not actually talking about the book now <laughs> we'll talk about the book when I when I end but I guess we are talking about the book because it's it, you know it's spurred me on to go particularly to um sources of inspiration for me like I've been watching some stuff from Yoga with Adrian on her membership and how she talks philosophically about life you know there's a phrase that I loved for many years that everything you want is on the other side of fear right that there's you always have to cross that barrier of fear and it's so easy to let yourself stay behind that barrier and that's almost what I feel like I've been doing so far this year is doing everything half way but not not wanting to find a way to cross that barrier but not being able to find a way to and living in a, a certain kind of fear and living in a certain kind of safety that isn't the life that I want to live living in a certain kind of like yeah safeness bubble that I know is fine but doesn't push me beyond anything and I don't know I feel like reading this book and the perspective on life it just makes you want to live life to the fullest. So I'm feeling very positive this morning and I'm ready to get my heart broken by the last 100 pages, which I'm gonna go read now, which I just put makeup on, I just realized. I always do this. I always go put makeup on and then I'm like, shit. <laughs> oh dear, that's not good. I feel the need to say the F word now. I'm about to cry, but I better go film all the things that I need to film today that, you know, I don't aren't related to this vlog, but I need to do today. Better go do that now before I finish the last 100 pages. I'm still really, really enjoying it, and I am scared for where this is going to go in the last 100 pages. But I feel like the way that everything has been set up, I'm just so excited for this last 100 pages, and then get back to you. finished it here she is and I'm gonna give it five stars I'm gonna give it five stars and I do want to preface this by saying I didn't love it as much as I loved the first book this doesn't feel disappointing to me but like so many people online were like oh it's so much better than the first one it's even better I'm like mm. <laughs> I don't know about that I always keep lying <laughs> so I think my expectations were just really high for where this was gonna go in the ending and I thoroughly enjoyed it. It was an amazing time, you know? It probably, at the rate that I'm going this year, will be in my top 10 of the year, but I think it might be more towards the bottom bottom half of it. Yeah, I really enjoyed it. I really loved all the reveals. What happened was what I was hoping would happen is my theory was the start of something new. No, it was... <laughs> It was like the start of many reveals, you know? It wasn't the big reveal, which it kind of got revealed what I had been theorizing at the 300-ish, just after 300 page mark, just after I last checked in with you. And I'm glad that it didn't go down that route. I can't believe I didn't cry. Everyone's out here crying. <laughs> And I cry at everything. I literally cry at everything. And I don't really know what people would have been crying at. I don't know if you would have seen that clip. I did get close to crying towards the end. Basically, without spoiling anything, Ibrahim, one of the four main friends, one of the four main characters, his storyline in this book is very much to do with trauma and PTSD and loneliness and, you know, depression and all these different things. I wish we'd have seen a bit more of that. I really wish that feels to me like the most emotionally impactful bit of the book. I just never felt we sat in that long enough because the chapters are quite short I never felt like we sat in that long enough for me to cry I got close they'd be like the last couple lines of a chapter would start setting me off and then we'd be gone on to the next escapade so I wish we had there was a, that moment towards the end when I almost cried we like sat in it for probably the longest that we had um so far but I just wanted you know there were like three uh, minimum sections that made me cry 
in the first one and I didn't feel like there was that super emotionally impactful scene that made me love the first one where you had this joy and this lightheartedness and this chuckles, you know, you chuckle to yourself reading it. But you also had those really emotional moments and I didn't feel like this had that, but I still loved it. Like it's still amazing for me. It's still what I want, you know, a wonderful mystery with so many interesting topics, like I said, covered through the kind of psychology of these characters. I'm very excited because the third one is coming out in about a month. And it's like a tricky with series, right? Because I'm like, oh, I think I should read the third one straight away. Like when it comes out, I should try and read it pretty soon, at least before the end of the year. But <laughs> then when you read the next one, you're a little bit like, oh, I've forgotten stuff. So it's difficult to pace yourself with series that are ongoing. Because I think these are pretty much coming out every year on the dot. This one came out I think on like the 15th of September last year and the next one's coming out on the 16th of September. So it's literally like, you know, it's clockwork. They're like, better get the coin, you know, <laughs> while we're rolling in it. Bling, bling, bling. Bitches is mad. <laughs> So I don't know if I'll read the, the next one straight away or if I'll try and wait a bit because if I need to read the next one straight away, it will make that a better reading experience, but then it's even longer into the next one. So it's very tricky. Yeah, this is just absolutely a favorite series for me. Now that I've read the second one, I can say it's up there, but I do not agree that it's as good as the first one. I feel like in my disappointment, not disappointment, it's not the right word, but with such high expectations, part of me is like, oh, this is a 4.75, but it's not. It's better than some five stars I've read this year. I was just hoping for so much, especially because the, last one was you know my top read of last year i think this is the best celebrity series out there i mean he's like a very very british niche celebrity and he's a celebrity known because he's clever do you know what i mean he's known for being clever if you're not from the uk he um presents lots of kind of like trivia shows where he's like the expert on there basically that's kind of like distill it down very simply but so he's known for his intelligence and for his breadth of knowledge and I really feel like you can see that come out through this book so yeah five stars I don't think it was ever gonna be anything less I think I'll give the next one five stars because I just love the setting the mystery the, the coziness but also the 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 interesting topics that are discussed so yeah, absolutely loved it. I hope you guys have enjoyed this edition of Wrapped Up. It's the penultimate one until December. We only have, gonna have one more in September, but I hope you enjoyed the vlog. If you got into the end, comment the uh, diamond emoji because there's diamonds in this book, as you can see on the back. So comment that kind of like diamond shape emoji if you got into the end. Thank you guys so much for watching as always, and I'll see you very soon in another video. Bye.